Okay, so if we can go back to the, to, if there's a slide up, that's our, that's our methodology. We heard it last night. We preach Christ, God opens blind eyes. But now, just as we, as we head on, um, what we, can we now just turn to Mark's gospel, please? Because the question is, how do we preach Christ? And let's turn to Mark's gospel to see that. So if you could turn in your Bibles to Mark, and Mark 1 verse 1, I wonder if you can see it, tells us that Jesus has two faces. So do we see Mark 1 verse 1? He's not just a man, he's God. So the beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. So in Mark 1 verse 1, we're told, yes, there is this man, Jesus, but please write this word down now. This is the drama of Mark's gospel. Jesus is not just a man, he's the son of God. And now what I get people to do is to write over the top of their Bibles in Mark's gospel, one word that sums up the drama of Mark's gospel. Here's the drama of Mark's gospel. Please jot this word down, blindness. So, so, the disciples, and indeed everyone in Mark's gospel, is blind to the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. And what we're going to see in Mark's gospel as we go through it is layer upon layer of evidence that shows me who Jesus is, and why he came, what it means to follow him. But just before we get to that, could we pop up the slide, please, which um, if we can pop up the slide of the two-faced lady. So we've got, we've just had if we can move on the slides, please. So that's it, that slide there. Can we flick that one on? Perfect. Now, everyone, can you see that? So I use this all the time as a tool for teaching Mark. Just have a look at that. Can you just make sure you can see the young woman and the old woman in the slide? Everyone, can, I would just want to make sure you've got both faces. So can you make sure that you can, can, can everyone just give me a shout if you can see that? Can you see? Can you see the young woman? She's slightly turning away. She's got a necklace. And so you can see her cheek and her nose. And then the old woman, she's got a big eye, a big mouth there, a wart on her nose. Everyone got both those two? How are we doing on that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is <clears throat> a key tool for teaching Mark's gospel because it illustrates Mark 1 verse 1. Jesus has two faces. He's not just a man, he's God. By the way, this picture was famously um, done by an American in 1910, and he rather bravely entitled it, My Wife and My Mother-in-Law. <laughs> so, so there it is. And Jesus, Mark 1 verse 1, it's, not, it's the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. And therefore, as we come to Mark's Gospel, the issue of identity, who is Jesus, is going to be the drama. Now, let's have a look down just to see that in Mark 1, verse 1. We're told he's the son of God. Now, have a look at verses 1 to 20, brothers and sisters. And I just want you to flick through it quickly. There are seven witnesses to who Jesus is. If I can just have the slide come back onto me, that'd be great. There are, there are there, just, just, just on me, um, there are seven witnesses to who Jesus is in verses 1 to 20 through Mark 1, 1 to 20, brothers and sisters, and see if you can see them. So let's just to get, get that out. This is the issue of identity. We're learning he's not just a man, he's God. And there are at least seven different witnesses to that fact. Just quickly flick through. We preach Christ. God will open blind eyes. What are, what are they? Who in 1 to 20 testifies to the fact that Jesus isn't just a man, he's God. You've got a couple of minutes just to look for those. Just flick through. I hope you've written the word blindness over the top of, the, of Mark's gospel, because that's the big theme. People are blind. And now we're beginning to get the witnesses that mean our eyes will be opened, saying he's not just a man, he's the son of God. Can I give you a minute to flick through and find the witnesses? There, there we go. So, so, um, People are blind. Now, here's the code to the identity, the mission and the call of Jesus. And really, Mark is amazingly disciplined because what he does is he 
every verse is about one of those things. And of course, as we look down here, we're already on the call. It's not just who is Jesus, because verse 18, at once they left their nets and followed him. Verse 20, without delay, he called them and they left their father Zebedee. So you start with he's the son of God, but within 20 verses, you've got four individuals who are following him. But when you're teaching Mark's gospel, these are the three issues people are blind to. Identity, who is Jesus? Mission, why did he come? Call, what does it mean to follow him? And if we can just flip down onto the next slide, please, just the next one down. Thanks, just pop that up. Here's the pattern for Mark's gospel. So when you're training people in Mark, here's one picture that enables people to get it. On the one side, I always have the two-faced lady, so I've already shown you. And then on the other side, identity mission call. Can you see who Jesus is? Can you see why he came? Can you see what it means to follow him? And of course, people are constantly blind. They can't see who Jesus is. They can't see why he died on the cross. They can't see what it means to follow him. Let's have a look at a passage that just sums up that blindness. Can we come back on to me, please? Mark 4, verse 35. So I'm now going to teach a passage that, that and, and, and all I'm doing here, brothers and sisters, in my methodology is I'm preaching Christ. God is opening blind eyes. So everything I'm doing here is about, here's the phrase, letting the gospel tell the gospel. Do jot that down, please. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to let the gospel tell the gospel. Here's the gospel account. It's about identity mission call who is jesus why did he come what does it mean to follow him and then all i'm doing is opening the gospel and teaching it but brothers and sisters here's the key as i'm doing that i'm going okay i'm going to preach christ we'll have a talk from the front i'm going to get them into small groups to have a little bible study to look at the same passage towards the end of the evening if i'm running a little ce course christian explored i'll say right what did you make of that let's talk individually to see if they've understood it then I'm going to send them home to read it for themselves. So I'm underlining by four different ways of learning, front, small group, one-to-one, -one and at home. Okay, with that in mind, let's have a look at a passage that wonderfully encapsulates the blindness issue. Mark 4, verse 35. Can we have a look at 35 to 41? Let's have a look down and see it together. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up. The word is lilaps. A squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. Now, the reason he's asleep is he is a man and one of his faces is a, and he's exhausted. If you look at the first four chapters of Mark's gospel, you can see why. So he's asleep on a cushion. I love that eye detail. The disciples woke him and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Now, if that's his identity, if Jesus is just a teacher, what can he do? I mean, my geography teacher at school was called Mr. Howard. He could have woken up and said, oh, Rico, well, what's happening here is the cold air from the mountains above Galilee is hitting the warm air from the sea that's causing a, a sort of a, a lilaps, a whirlwind type thing. He, he could have explained it, but not saved me. My English teacher would have made me write a poem. But is Jesus more than a teacher? That's the question. That's the drama as we look at his face here. Let's look down and see if he's more than a teacher. On we go. Verse 39. Let's just let the gospel tell the gospel. Okay, on we go. Verse 39. He got up rebuked the wind and said to the waves quiet be still then the wind died down it was completely calm oh well there you have it now i can't even do that with my bath water i sometimes sloosh up and down in the bath go quiet be still you probably don't do that you're probably too mature to do that but i sometimes do i mean but jesus stands up and because now here's the issue you never stop going back to mark 1 verse 1 that he's the son of god so because he's the son of god he has got power and authority over nature. And he stands up and says, quiet, be still. And the wind died down, it was completely calm. So the wind doesn't have ears. 
and the waves don't have ears. And that's the cause and result of the storm. But because Jesus has total authority, he can flatten it. What then happens? He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Well, they're now afraid, but it's not because of the storm. They're afraid because they're going, who am I in the boat with? Now, can they see he's the son of God? They're going, you know, you know, have you got it? Now, I remember reading this one to one with a West Indian guy called Paul, a big six foot four West Indian. And he came along to All Souls and I said, why have you come? He said, my sister told me to come. So he had a very pushy sister, wonderful. And we were reading this in Regent's Park near, near All Souls where I work. We, we'd sat down, we were having a coffee, we were going through this. And as we got to, to this bit, he said this. Now, this is talking about the whole theme of blindness. He said, he said, Rico, the disciples are so stupid, aren't they? I said, yeah, why are they stupid? He said, well, they can't see who Jesus is. Ah, uh, can you see who he is? Can you see he's not just a man, he's God? And Paul said to me, he said, it's interesting. I came to all souls because my sister said I needed a spiritual dimension to my life. But this isn't about a spiritual dimension. He said, this is about the fact that the whole world belongs to Jesus, doesn't it? Now, what was happening there? As I preached Christ, as we looked at Jesus, what was God doing? Anyone tell me what was God doing? God was opening blind eyes. Do you see? That's the mechanism. As I was going, look, look, let's look at Jesus. The Holy Spirit was transforming Paul's heart. And he was going, gosh, he's not just a, he's not just a man. He's God. And therefore, he's not just in charge of a little spiritual bit of my life. He's in charge of my life. Are you with me? So we preach Christ. God opens blind eyes. We keep doing that. And it's around the themes of identity, mission, call. Let's look on. Let's have a look at another passage that, again, picks up the whole theme of identity. Can we look down? Verse 21 of chapter 5. Let's see identity again. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered round him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him. Now, I've never seen a man of standing in the community do that. What's going on here? Now we know he pleaded earnestly with him. Please come and put your hands on, on, on my daughter. She's dying so that she'll be healed and live. So this man has fallen flat at the feet of Jesus. Now back to his identity. If he's just a carpenter, what can he do? Answer, build a coffin. If he's just a carpenter, he can build a coffin. But is he more than a carpenter? That's the question. And here is this Pharise here is this, this man, Jairus. He's absolutely desperate. He's flat on his face. If Jesus is just a carpenter, he can build a coffin. But is he more than that? Let's go on and pick up the story in verse 35. While Jesus was still speaking, some, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter's dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? So Jesus is just a teacher. She's dead. He can't do anything about it. Overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, don't be afraid, just believe. Now, brothers and sisters, you've got to be pretty sure of your guns to say that, haven't you? You've got to be pretty sure of yourself. If, if you're saying to a grieving couple whose daughter has just died, don't be afraid, just believe, you better be more than a carpenter. He better, have a, he better be the son of God. And let's see what happens. Verse 37. He didn't let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, while this commotion and wailing, the child's not dead, but asleep. Well, of course. Uh, 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 and then verse 40. But they laughed at him. Of course they did. They know a dead child when they see one. And this is the sarcastic laugh of the playground. This is, how dare you? Who do you think you are telling us that? That, 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 that? that she's just asleep. How dare you play games with these parents? Verse 40. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother, the disciples who were with him. 
he went in where the child was, he took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. Now here's the issue. Because Jesus is God's king in God's world, he's the son of God. Again, back to Mark 1 verse 1. Can't you see, just as you and I can wake the sleeping, he has the authority to raise the dead. Now, at that point, we apply it. So when it comes to your death, will you put your hand into the hand of Jesus? We preach Christ, God opens blind eyes. That's the third element of faith, trust. Will you trust Jesus with your death? So we're always doing that. We're always preaching Christ and praying God will open blind eyes. And can you see, basically the first eight chapters are about identity. It's all about who is Jesus. He calms the storm, he raises the dead girl. Everybody, the grand central station of Mark's gospel, as you can see is Mark 8, 27 to 30, 31 to 33 and, and 30, 34 to 38. So when you want the passage that summarize identity mission call, it's these three. Can you all see them with on, they're all on your screen. Got them all brothers and sisters? Everyone got them? Yeah. Now, can you have a look at that, please? And please, just on your own, just have a look at who is blind and who can see in 27 to 30 under identity. Who is blind and who can see Mark 8, 31 to 33 under mission? And who's blind and who can see under call? So, so where is their blindness and sight to the call? Because the drama will be those three. So can we just in groups now, look at those together where is their blindness and sight to the identity of jesus 31 to, um, 27 to 30 31 to 33 where is their blindness and sight to the mission of jesus and then 34 to 38 what about the call great um let me tell you how i discovered this outline it, i think in our ministries we normally only get one good idea in 40 years but on the day of 9 11 so 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 back in 2001 we were trying to work out the filming of Mark's Gospel and a guy called Rob said, just give me the journey, Rico. And I said, well, I suppose weeks one and two are into identity, did a circle, three, four, five into mission, six and seven into call. And I had a eureka experience. I said, that's it. And once you see it in a pattern, people can then do it. And up until then, I'd been going around and I'd been saying, this is how to teach Mark's Gospel and going through it. And people just... You could see the screensaver come down. They just didn't think they could do it. But when I did it, when they suddenly saw the three words, and then the fourth word is blindness, I can tell you there just was a sense in the room of, well, I can do that. That's simple enough. I could go through. I mean, if it's just three words, I can do it. So let's just now, just as we draw to a close, can we flick back onto the, um, onto the headings, please, the, the slides? And I just want you to do, I, I just want to show you three exercises. So I wonder if we can, Bev, if we can get back to the slides. Thanks. And the next one down. Next slide down, please. What happens, do you see the next slide, thanks, if I've got identity and mission, but not call? And then the next slide, please. What happens if I've got identity and call, but not mission? And then thirdly, what happens if I've got mission and call, but not identity? So in my gospel preaching, what happens if I'm not getting all three of that? Now, we've often seen it. Bonhoeffer talked about what happened in Germany when, when Mark 8, 34 wasn't preached. Just in your groups as our last breakout, let's just head back across and, uh, and just try and get, get that in place. So let's just draw to a close now. Okay, let's finish by turning then, please, to Mark 16. Can you turn to the end of the gospel with the last minute? Turn to Mark 16, and it's a brilliant ending. You see, here we are, and they're at the tomb, and you see what happens here. Verse 4, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, so on, on, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene, 
who was crucified, he's risen. Now, brothers, is that, sisters, is that identity mission or call? He's risen. What's that one? He's risen. That's his identity, isn't it? He was crucified. Which one is that? His mission. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter. He's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you'll see him just as he told you. So now go and tell. That's call. Now, so those are the three things in verses six and seven. Identity, he's risen. Mission crucified. Call, go and tell. Because they're blind, how does Mark's gospel end? Do you see verse, tw verse eight? Isn't it brilliant, the ending? Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the middle of Nero's persecutions. If you can't see identity mission call, you run and hide. But if you get it, you'll go to the, you'll go to the lions and die. But what you've got to get in place is those three things. So it's a brilliant cliffhanger to end the gospel. Your homework is to go away and to colour in the gospel under those three headings, identity, mission, call. Colour it in and, 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 and see how everything's about one of those three. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. I hope that really unlocks the code for Mark's gospel for you.